Christian greetings, everyone, in these last days of life on earth. As you recall, in last week's audio clip, I stated the Roman attorneys defending the thousands of child-molesting Catholic priests were going to have a field day with the Supreme Court's decision regarding sodomy. Many courts in the land will jump on the bandwagon and a flurry of dropped cases will be the result. This Roman Catholic homosexual agenda has been the core of media topics for a few months now. Rome's lawyers finally figured out what will work. Get the American public flooded with news concerning homosexuals to such an extent that it reaches even the courts. When the judges they have backing their agenda pass such decadent laws as they did last week, the American public will be so conditioned that they will sit back and allow it to happen. Like the Roe v. Wade decision of not too long ago, we see the American public, especially the so-called religious leaders, taking a back seat once again. And now that what I saw as inevitable just a mere seven days ago, we now see as reality. According to the Associated Press of July 1, 2003, California is dropping more charges against former Catholic priests accused of molesting children years ago. The state attorney general's office says charges will be dismissed against Franklin Becker and Harold Depp due to last week's Supreme Court ruling. The court struck down a state law allowing prosecution of long-past molestation crimes. Becker is free on bond in Wisconsin. He was charged with four counts of sexually assaulting a 15-year-old boy beginning in 1977 in San Diego. Depp, who was in custody, was charged with 42 counts of molesting an 11-year-old boy beginning in 1971 in San Diego County. In Los Angeles, criminal charges are expected to be dropped against Father George Rucker. Three women who say he molested them in the 1970s vow to continue their civil suits against the church. This sickens my heart to no end. However, it also allows for us to see clearly the days we live in. If this doesn't open the eyes of many that we are as in the days of Sodom, that Jesus proclaimed our lives would experience just before his return, then nothing may move them. Unjust law after law is about to be passed, and the Christ-like lifestyle will be what falls in the result. This land of the free and home of the brave is slowly but surely becoming the land of the persecuted and the home of the gay right before our eyes. The Roman Catholic Church is using the sickening sodomy law to their advantage in a way that literally turns my stomach. How, I ask, can Catholics stay in a church that is so disgustingly evil? How much more proof do they need? They know these priests are molesting their children. Their fellow church members tell them they're doing so. And they are now seeing with their own eyes their church leaders jumping on every opportunity to free their child molesting priests. They don't care what the Catholic people think anymore. They don't even worry about defending themselves regarding such evil activity. If the law of the land says it's okay, then the church says, whoopee, we are free, we are free indeed. Never mind the fact that child molestation is a hellish sinful act that Jesus abhors. Never mind that hundreds of thousands and probably millions have been destroyed by these Roman Catholic child stalkers. Never mind that these men have literally terrorized and raped many of our little boys. If these Roman Catholic priests can influence the powers that be to such an extent that says sodomy is now an acceptable practice, these so-called Christian church leaders can stand vindicated before the Roman Catholic-controlled U.S. government. I honestly believe this act of Rome in concert with Washington is going to open many eyes concerning this evil church. This church is so worried about their almighty dollar that they will sacrifice the children and families of those they molested in the hopes that the few that are still standing firm in Rome won't leave. Plus, Rome must have their priests released from jail. It's common knowledge now that this church is unable to keep the priesthood filled with men. There are articles, videos, and even books on this topic. Most heterosexual men refuse to join the priesthood because of the unbiblical stance that they cannot marry women. But the gay community already rejects women, so the priesthood is actually heaven on earth for them. Fact is, what little numbers they do have in recruitment is most assuredly a majority of gay men, and they know it. What I also think is going to open many eyes is the fact that this so-called Christian church doesn't seek to stand up and say we did wrong regarding this child molestation problem. The Vatican striking down the zero tolerance is proof of that fact. They knew that if they agreed with the zero tolerance agenda, their already weak numbers in the priesthood would be cut even more than they can afford. So low, in fact, that many of the churches would have to close, and that means money would stop flowing. These Catholic priests were caught red-handed right before the eyes of mankind molesting children, and instead of doing the right thing, they seek to do the 
legal thing instead, just to save their evil church. And just as I stated in last week's audio clip, the judges have indeed stepped forward to say sodomizing children is now no longer illegal. And to think many of us thought that this day was somewhat long in coming or never to arrive. Soon you will see a flurry of child molesters being released in our neighborhoods. Not just priests, mind you. If they're going to get this to work, they have to say all child molesters are acceptable now. If you say that only Catholic priests are exempt from this crime of pedophilia, it will look like they're playing favorites. But if you make everyone that does this act seem acceptable in some way or another, then the priests look even better because it's now considered a normal fact of life. You don't think they'll do this? Headline, Hundreds of Molesters Freed by Supreme Court. Decision Throws Out Legislation Allowing Prosecution of Old Sex Abuse Cases. Posted June 28, 2003. WorldNetDaily.com. Prosecutors, defense attorneys, and the California Attorney General's Office were still scrambling today to figure out a response to the U.S. Supreme Court ruling that will free hundreds of confessed and convicted child molesters from prisons across the state. Last Thursday, in a decision little noticed outside the Golden State, the Supreme Court ruled in a 5-4 to four decision that California had violated the Constitution ban on ex post facto, which means after the fact, laws when the legislator decided to change the time limit for bringing criminal charges in child sex abuse cases and made the new limit retroactive to cover older cases. As a result of the decision, a 55-year-old defrocked priest awaiting trial on charges of molesting four altar boys at the San Gabriel Mission in Los Angeles County, Lawrence Lovell, was one of the first released. He had been behind bars less than a week. Hours later, Michael Wimp, a 63-year-old retired priest whose bail had been set two weeks ago at $2 million after being charged with molesting five boys 20 years ago, was released. Lovell and Wimp are among hundreds of people, some convicted, some confessed, some still awaiting trial, who will be released from jails and prisons across California or whose cases will be dropped as a result of Thursday's decision. For many prosecutors, victims, advocates, and police, the court's decision was hard to take. The affected cases all involved not just allegations of abuse, but strong corroborating evidence which was required under the 1994 law that the high court struck down. In Santa Clara County, Assistant District Attorney Chuck Willingham spent long hours after the ruling calling victims to let them know of the outcome. About 100 cases in his county will be affected. Los Angeles District Attorney Steve Cooley has estimated that at least 200 cases in that county may be affected by the ruling. But determining which cases are still viable is a slow process, officials said. The Supreme Court, in an opinion by Justice Stephen G. Breyer, nullified a 1994 California law giving prosecutors authority to bring new charges in child molestation cases where the charge filing deadline already expired. The law allowed such new charges if they were filed one year after an abuse victim reported the crime to police, no matter when the assault had occurred. The law was aimed at cases where the victim had reached adulthood and then reported an abuse to authorities. The court's decision apparently ended the prosecutor's case against Marion Reynolds Stognar of Antioch, California, who was charged in 1998 with criminal sexual assaults on his two daughters in one instance 43 years earlier and another 31 years before. At the time those alleged incidents occurred, prosecutors had up to three years to bring charges, but failed to do so. Not only does this allow for child molesters to be freed, It allows for all sorts of sexual decadence to be legalized. From polygamy to incest, we are about to see this nation go straight into the pits of hell. And when the Lord's wrath falls upon this land, as well as many other countries that cater to Rome's homosexual desires, you will see a decadent race of people seeking to appease the gods by enforcing what they think is laws that will please him. For example... Sunday laws will be easily lobbied because no longer is there any God fearing men in government office. Did you notice that the Los Angeles District Attorney Steve Cooley had estimated that at least 200 cases in a single county may be affected by the ruling? That's just one county, folks. And did you also notice the article stated that the new law was aimed at cases where the victim had reached adulthood and then reported an abuse to authorities? How many of those children that were molested have enough courage to come forward at that time? They fear the priest and are ashamed as well. They won't come forward when the priest does this, and the priests know it. And even if some do tell mommy and daddy, their parents shut them down because they are so blinded by Rome that they can't believe their own children. 
I know, I was a member of the Roman Catholic Church when I was a youth that had a priest by the name of Norman Mayday that molested many of the children. They told their parents in vain what had happened. Many of them were my classmates. This new law is exactly what Rome needs to get their priests out of jail. This law will also be used to prevent any further problems as well. Rest assured, folks, they will continue to molest those children. It's part of their makeup. It's how Roman Catholicism is now defined. This is what we can thank the Vatican for, people. They are in such a mess that they decide to sacrifice the children of this world so that their pedophile priests can be released from jail. And more importantly, they are doing this so a lot of these high-priced lawsuits will either be lowered or outright dropped. Praise the Lord for his divine wisdom. This hellish act of the vat of sin is bound to open the eyes of many. The prophecy states that this church's true agenda will be made known. And now we see that this day is soon approaching. But keep in mind, they will eventually do all they can to prevent it. What do I mean by that? Think about this for a moment. Many, and I mean many, are now seeing this putrid garbage played out in the media on a daily basis now. Even young children are watching this sewage. It's all over the televisions. Many are about to step forward and voice their concerns in one way or another. Soon you'll see more websites, news articles, radio announcers, preachers, and ordinary people from all walks of life talking about the evils of this church and how it truly is evil. Even more Catholics are going to leave because of this, and then we will see the church really start to flex its muscles. Like during the Reformation, the church graphically fears its church pews being emptied. The Vatican will revert back to the days of the persecutions to try and quench the opposition against it that so graphically is exposing it. The difference at first will be done in a somewhat secretive manner, just like we see the laws in Texas and California being passed. Many that look upon these laws are still unaware that Rome's behind it all. They will do the same thing with the Christians that speak out against them. Many of us will be arrested and even killed for crimes we never committed. And the only reason we are persecuted is the same reason Rome went after the apostles of old. We preach Jesus Christ and his truth-filled testimony. The Roman church has dug their own grave. They are about to jump in with both eyes wide open. And just in case, there are still some extremely weak in the faith Catholics out there that feel there might be something wrong with homosexuality in the priesthood or some that think that homosexuality is not all that bad. We have this bishop proclaiming what some may refer to as the most insane comment ever known to man. Headline, Bishop claims Jesus wouldn't care about gay clergy. This is from the Times Online, the Sunday Times from June 29, 2003. The senior clergyman who nominated a gay priest as Bishop of Reading has claimed there is a biblical authority for his decision. Richard Harries, the Bishop of Oxford, has declared there is no bar in the New Testament to the appointment of a gay bishop. Jesus said nothing about homosexuality, he says, in an interview in a Today's Sunday Times. Harries contrasts the absence of a biblical prohibition on homosexuality with Jesus' clear line against divorce. Despite this, he says, the Church of England has recently made provision for divorced people to be married in the church, even if their former spouse is still living. Harries said... Gay and lesbian people find themselves the way they are, with God-given affections for people of the same sex. They do not conform to certain biblical texts, but God takes them and their love as it is and blesses it. People, homosexuality is an abomination to both the Old and New Testament God of Scripture. There is absolutely no way around that. He would never bless this. Now, I know this is the Church of England that is doing this, but were you aware they have already agreed to make friends with Rome, as did all the other churches? And were you also aware that the only difference in the Church of England and the Church of Rome is that they used to ignore the office of Pope? Walk into a Roman Catholic Church or a Church of England, and you will see an exact duplicate of that which was designed by Satan. The Church of England is, in fact, an exact copy of the Roman Catholic Church, and they are now being used as a method to put forth the Vatican political desires before the people in such a way that looks as if Rome isn't involved. Just like all the Protestant churches that are truly Roman Catholic as of June 26, 2000, so is this church. Common sense affords us this one fact. If, in fact, the Church of England wasn't controlled by Rome or wasn't truly Catholic, why would they declare Jesus Christ would not have a problem with the gay clergy? Is it not the Roman clergy that has this problem? 
fact is people, it's Rome speaking from England. It's just another PR tactic to further flaunt the gay agenda before the people of this world so as to assure a good outcome in the courts all over the globe. Thousands of extremely high-priced lawsuits is what's fueling this hellfire coming from Rome. Prophetically speaking, we are now and have been for some time living as in the days of Lot. Luke chapter 17, verses 28 to 30 states, Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. The world is embracing the sin of sodomy. That is fitly named after the city of Sodom. They are doing exactly as Jesus Christ said they would do. And all of this decadence is being orchestrated via the halls of the Roman Catholic Vatican. And the wonderful thing about all this is, you have God's word on it. This is Nicholas from Presence of God Ministries saying, Until next time, I pray the Lord blesses you and yours with the desire to be the Christian he created you to be. Thank you for listening, and remember, the truth is provided in the Word of God.